What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch here, joined by Dylan, Kev. We are here for your 2017 NFL prediction, starting in the wild card round today. We will be doing predictions, wild card, divisional, conference championship, and of course the Super Bowl. If you guys have already caught myself and Dylan's picks, you probably know where we're going with some of these picks. Uh, Kev's picks are coming out. Don't worry about it. He promised me. He sent me the audio today. I'm just editing it. And then it will be up sometime. Um, you know, this will be out on Thursday. So probably on the same day it will be out. So mm -hmm. you rather might know if Kevin picked this team or not, or because he does have a controversial pick in this round. So mm -hmm. it's going to be very interesting. Actually, two controversial picks because I have one myself. So um, it's going to be a good time going over these games, previewing these games, watching these games, and having fun with the whole YouTube community. So comment below who you think is going to win in the wild card round and even the Super Bowl. Let us know if you haven't already. All right, guys. Uh, Dylan, let, sure. the, let everybody know how we did in the regular season, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Well, you know, of course, big boy Dylan had to get the victory. I got <laughs> – I, I – I didn't add up all the week for week 17, but I did get 12 wins and four losses. So actually Mitch did one game better. So I can add it up here. I got 171 wins, 83 losses and two ties on the regular season. Mitch, he went up there, got 162 wins, 92 losses and two ties. So not bad, not bad a little behind the rear, but I think we both did pretty good in the regular season. I think safe to say, we put in a lot of good picks, so these playoff predictions are going to be a little bit interesting this time around. Hashtag beast mode for the regular season, but there will be no beast mode in Seattle. We'll get to that. We'll get to that game. Um, let's start on Saturday. We have the Raiders at the Texans. Oh, oh so I'm sorry. Sorry oh, about it, that. It, 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 you're not happy sorry. about Brock Osweiler? Oh, oh, he, yeah. oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a bad start to the what game. What about Cook? You don't this like Mr. Cook? quarterback in NFL history to start his first career game in a playoff game. Well, Ooh. it's the Raiders. They're heading to the Texans. Raiders did, of course, better in the regular season. Um, I think they were, were there 12-4, and 11-5. Um, and the Raiders had one of the best offenses all year long until Mr. Derek Carr went down. And now we're in the situation where not the second – but the third string quarterback is going to start. It's going to be very hectic. Um, a crazy game to watch to see how both teams game plan for this one. I think the Raiders, if they have a chance in this game, it's going to be totally different the way that they won their previous games. They're going to have to commit to the run. They're going to have to commit to playing great defense. And that's how they're going to win this game. But uh, ultimately, I'm going to go with the Texans because I trust them more at this point. Osweiler has played some games. He has some experience this season. He has some experience in big football games. This is at home, uh, actually the place where the Super Bowl is going to be played. Maybe that factors into things. I don't think the Texans actually think they're going to make it. But regardless, uh, Osweiler is going to lead the team to about 16 to 20 points and pull this one out because the Texans have the number one defense in terms of yardage allowed in the NFL. I think that will be enough against the Raiders who, you know, they don't really have a great defense. Um, they've had kind of an average to bad defense all season long. It's played good in parts. It actually led the league in turnover differential. Um, but I just, I like the Texans too much. Their defense is too trustworthy for me to go the other direction with a quarterback. I know nothing about, so I'm going with the Texans. Okay. I'll go next. Um, you know, this is so sad to see the Raiders, uh, just, they were up here, and the number two seed doing so great, and then Derek Carr got hurt. I'm like, oh, God, their season's crumbled. Uh, and then Matt McGuane got hurt last week. So Connor Cook, who has never started an NFL game, is starting his first game in a playoff situation. That's got to be quite hectic for him. Um, look, it just comes down to logistics. I'm not going to pick a quarterback that's never actually started a game. He's only played one quarter in the NFL or two quarters. Um, and the two quarters he did play, they didn't look very good. They, I know it was on the spot, and it, you just don't know exactly what he's going to do. Um, and this game, this last game against the uh, Broncos was terrible for him. Uh, Brock Osweiler, I think he's a quite trash quarterback. Um, however, he's better than a quarterback that hasn't played football. Um, and when it comes down to it, they still have receivers. You know, they got DeAndre Hopkins. they got Will Fuller. 
uh, that defense, like Mitch said, is going to step up and intimidate the young quarterback who doesn't know exactly his game plan and doesn't know how to how he's going to fit in this playoff style. You know, it's in Houston, so a lot of fans are going to get on him. And I just think that defense is going to show out too much. I'm going to pick with the Houston Texans here. So this is where I start being controversial. <laughs> Kevin, let's go, Kevin. What? Let's start off, start off with a bang. Uh, Brock Osweiler is the biggest free agent bust of any NFL season. There is no question about that. Wow. Uh, the, this John Elway was smart by not touching this guy. Uh, the Houston Texans, actually, there's a, was a few reports that they actually were going to revolt if they weren't going to start uh, Tom Savage. Uh Listen, if there's a, a position that a quarterback can, can be in that is a non-pressure situation as bad as it is, it's this one. Um, they don't need to score a lot of points to win this game. They need to score maybe at most 15. They've got the – I think they can control this game with the running game. I don't know if Houston can as much. And I'm going to pick them. I'm going to pick them. It's going to be a very low-scoring game. They need one or two plays, and I think that they're going to do it. I think the star of this game will be Amari Cooper. He'll make he'll make the big play, and I'll, in a very low scoring game, I'm picking the Oakland to win this one. Wow, uh, Kev, I'm just yeah. going to ask you: Did you take your meds today? <laughs> uh, listen, this. Uh, listen, the, the the Oakland Raiders are tw- were twelve and four. The Houston Texans are nine and seven. The Oakland Raiders. Overall, are a better team. They do have the. One I understand. Win. They do have the one win, and I think that they've got overall. They've got the skill player positions, and I do think they have the coaching edge. I just, I just, I don't. I mean, I think that that there's no pressure on the Oakland Raiders right now, win or lose, mm-hmm. none, none. The point. So to 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 me, the the pressure is all on Houston. The pressure is all on Brock Osweiler, who I think is going to get rattled more by the fans than this than this kid Cook will. So I I think I think overall, take the quarterbacks out of this. I Oakland's the better team. Okay, um, that's debatable to me. I actually think the Texans are the better team. I think the Raiders, other than their offensive line, I think you could say that the Texans are better in every area. Um, they have just as good as receivers as the Raiders do. I know that the quarterback doesn't exactly use them, but they're there. Their running back is just as good. Lamar Miller is just as good as Latavius, if not better. Um, their tight end is better. Um, their defense is a lot better, especially their front seven. Jadavian Clowney is one of the best defensive players in the league, and I know that people don't want to bring that up because of they thought he was a bust at the beginning of his career, but he really has been impactful this season. Um, even without J.J. Watt, they're the number one defense in the league in terms of yardage, and I think that that defense will be the difference. Um, but we're going to let Kevill – uh, go with the Raiders. Let's go to the next no, game. got some upsets, you know. If he wants to go with that one, that's all right. That's all right. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to ask you guys oh, a question. If here we Derek go. Derek Carr is in this game, who wins? Oh, Derek, Derek Carr, Carr wins. wins. Absolutely. Thank you. That's why. I'm going to – that's why. They wouldn't even go – they wouldn't even be the four seed. They would be the two seed. But, but the difference between Derek Carr and Brock Osweiler is, is so a huge deep. difference. If the Texans had Tom Brady, they would be 14-2 and two, just like the Patriots. Uh, I think they'd be 13 and three, but anyway, whatever. (laughs) One game difference. (laughs) Okay. So the lions play the Seahawks. These are Kevl Seahawks. If you guys don't know, um, the lions, these are nobody's lions. Nobody's nobody's man. Does anybody cheer for the lions? We like Matt Stafford here on the channel. We support him and he's going to be number one on a certain top 10 list. That's coming out very soon. So stay tuned for that. Uh, The Detroit Lions are a team that are plus nine in Vegas this week. I bet on that game. I'll tell you right now. I bet on that game because nine points is ridiculous. Can the Seahawks even score nine points? (laughs) Their offensive line, they have a left tackle that played basketball, and they just throw them out there on the field. But my thing is I'm going with the Seahawks here. Um, I just ripped them apart. But the thing is – the Lions, I think they haven't had momentum coming into the playoffs. Their defense is a little bit banged up. I do like Darius Slay coming back. I think he'll be able to kind of neutralize Doug Baldwin there. But the Lions' defense, they haven't got much of a pass rush which all season long, which I think is the difference in this game. Um, the Seahawks struggle with teams with good defensive lines. They struggled with the Rams, the Cardinals, um, a lot of teams that they've played. 
that have had good defensive lines have been able to have a good day against the Seahawks. A Bucks for sure. So the Lions are a team that hasn't had a great pass rush this entire season. Uh, and I think that the Seahawks, that kind of masks their deficiencies on the offensive side of the ball. So they'll be able to move the ball enough. Then the defensive side of the ball, I know they're missing Earl Thomas, but Richard Sherman, Bobby Wagner, um, those guys have a lot of experience in the playoffs. They're great players. And Pete Carroll has the coaching advantage. I'm going to go with the Seahawks as well with the home field. I think it will be, I think it will be a close game, though. I, I would definitely take the nine points if I, if I was betting on this game um, that I am. And I'm going with the Seahawks, but I'm taking the nine points in this one. So here's where my upside comes in. Uh, I'm picking the Detroit Lions over the Seattle Seahawks. For me, uh, the only thing that suffers for Seattle, in my opinion, is that they've lost their last two games and they came in, or last three games, and they didn't really come in with a lot of hot momentum. Uh, however, for me, the Seahawks have just not looked very good in the last month and a half. Uh, look at some of these games they played. They played the 49ers and almost lost to the 49ers. They lost to a Cardinals team. Um, they beat the Rams, but who doesn't beat the Rams? They got absolutely killed by the Packers. Um, they beat the Panthers, but the Panthers aren't that good this year. And they beat or they lost to the Buccaneers 14-5. to um, This team's been very, very inconsistent. Um, there's a lot of injuries. Of course, their offensive line is absolute trash. Tyler Lockett is out with his broken leg. Um, I think there's multiple opportunities for Matthew Stafford to come in clutch and use his receivers. We've always said that Matthew Stafford has been able to make his team a lot better. You've got Golden Tate, Marvin Jones, Eric Ebron. He's got the receivers for me that – if they want to, if there's some good coverage out there, they can use another guy and use him to his advantage. If they use Zach Zetter well, I think that will help him out a lot. And while I do know that Russell Wilson is a good quarterback and that he can make certain passes, I just don't see it getting done. I think the Lions will be able to contain it and make this a huge upset here. So I'm going to pick the Detroit Lions in a big upset. Uh, well, um, the uh, thing about this is, is I do think Detroit will cover the nine, uh, but I am picking Seattle. The, the, the pro there's two issues that I think are, are going to do play in the factor here. I do understand, Dylan, where you're coming from until the still set. Uh, not convinced about Stafford's throwing hand right now. He's clearly not throwing the ball well enough uh, and not as tight. I think that that's going to come into play, and I think the weather is going to come into play as well because I think it's expected to snow. Um, the Seahawks for this game only need to get 80 to 100 yards rushing. Uh, that'll be enough to win. And I think that they've got the defensive skill set that this is not the game that they're going to miss Earl Thomas. I do think that this is the game that they're going to miss Tyler, Tyler Lockett for sure. Cause I think they needed the big play. Um, I do think because, because every Detroit Lion game has done it, it's going to go down in the fourth quarter. But, uh, to me, I think, uh, this one is, is I would trust Russell Wilson uh, because this is home field. They, they are 7-1 and one at home. They lost they, The loss to Arizona was an absolute disaster, but um, I think this one they can pull off. Okay, so two of, us, or two of us going to Seahawks, one of us going to the Lions. We've been split both games so far. I think this game is going to be unanimous. It's the Steelers versus the Dolphins. The Steelers are favored by 10 points. Um, not sure if I would take – the 10 points or not. I'm not betting on this game for sure. Uh, but last time they played, Jay Ajay ran crazy. Um, he was the, the train out there, Ajay was, and he just he just ran over the Steelers' defense. And, and the Dolphins were at home in that game, which is a big factor. I believe they had Ryan Tannehill, and they won uh, pretty comfortably against the Steelers, and they confused them defensively. Um, so it's going to be an interesting matchup to see if – the Steelers can win the rematch. The Steelers, of course, are a team that Le'Veon Bell has been absolutely ridiculous. He's averaging the most yards from scrimmage since Priest Holmes in 2004. <laughs> that is pretty crazy per game. Um, so with Bell, with Brown, with Big Ben, I just think they're enough at home, which is a key factor for the Steelers all season long. They will win this game. I like the home field advantage. The Steelers have been playing a lot better defense at home, and that those three guys on offense will be enough to beat the Dolphins. The Dolphins are just – they're just not good enough. Uh, I think their coaching has been really, really good. I think that they've kind of masked a lot of their deficiencies on defense. 
They've gotten a lot better on offense with their play calling and such, and JHI has definitely helped that. But I'm going to go with the Steelers in this game. I'm also going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers on this one. Uh, if you just look at how offensively efficient they are every single time they hit the field, they are really, really good at finding the key receivers and key players. Of course, Le'Veon Bell is a beast, and I think he'll go through that defensive line like nobody's business. Um, they're at home, which is a huge advantage because if they're on the road, this might be a different setup. But with at home here, I just think they have a better advantage, and you got somebody like Antonio Brown covering, making big plays. Uh, you got Sammy Coates, who I think will always go deep. Um, and Miami's offense, to me, with Matt Moore, um, is just not going to get it done. J.H.I. will be a nice offensive player, and somebody like Jarvis Landry could be somewhat of effective. But for me, the Steelers, their offensive hand is just too hot to handle right now when it comes to Miami uh, with a guy who hasn't made a single career start in the playoffs again. Um, it's just it's going to be too much for me to pick Miami. So I got to go with Pittsburgh on this one, just with the hot hand that Big Ben knows what to do in the playoffs. Yeah, the experience edge is definitely with Pittsburgh on this one. Um, I do think Miami will hang around for a while. Um, I, I see this going down to the final two rounds. And if it goes down to the final two rounds, the edge is, is Pitts. Pitts. Mike Tomlin knows how to win, whether you like him or not. He knows how to win. He just wins. Uh, it's not always pretty, but uh, he, he wins. Just win, baby! Just He <laughs> takes the Raiders and just wins. And Ben is one of those quarterbacks you want the last, the last to have the last guy to have with the ball, and that's what it's come down to. So I'm uh, I'm taking Pittsburgh in this one. Okay, so that's our Miami will cover. First... I will say that. Okay, yeah, I do think Miami will cover. If I had to, if you put a gun to my head and you're like ten points either way, I'm picking the the lol fins. Um, but you know, it, it is what it is. Um, we're going in the next game: the G Men versus the Pack, the <sighs> biggest game of the weekend. And this is a game, honestly that a lot of teams are going to look at because this is this is this is probably going to be the most watched game but it's also going to be the game that i think has the most impact on the rest of the playoffs because i think both these teams have a huge huge um chance to go farther than just you know to the next round um so this is the giants with their defense uh, ranked pretty much first or second in every category um from week six on They've had the most sacks since week six. They've been the best scoring defense tied with the Patriots since week six. They've been the best yardage defense, the best third down defense, the best whatever you want to say. Landon Collins is a beast. Uh, their defense line's playing very good. Damon Harrison's eating up those snacks. And, you know, defense has been playing really well. The offense meh, is bad. Um, you know, they have, they have Eli, who's a turnover machine, whether it's throwing interceptions or, you know, getting strip sacked. Odell Beckham is their offense. It's a slant for 70 yards to Odell Beckham, and that's usually one of their touchdowns. Uh, their run game is pretty much non-existent. Their offensive line is pretty much non-existent. Ben McAdoo is their head coach. He was an offensive coach, yet their defense is better than their offense. Coincidence? I have no idea. <laughs> um, but on the Packers side, you have Jordy Nelson. You know, you have Devontae Adams, Ty Montgomery at running back now, who's arguably better than Eddie Lacy already. Aaron Rodgers, uh, a very, very good and very underrated offensive line, a great offense that's playing very well. Defense aside, a lot of injuries in the secondary. Um, that's going to be a huge, huge difference in this game, I think. Um, but their pass rush is very good. So the key for the Packers will be can their pass rush kind of, you know, hide the fact that they have so many injuries in the secondary. For me, I'm going with the Giants. And why I'm going with the Giants is I actually think this is the worst matchup that the Packers could have possibly gotten in the first round. I think they were better off losing to the Detroit Lions to go to Seattle and try and beat the Seahawks in Seattle than playing the Giants in Green Bay. Because I think every time – Kev brought this up in his preview, actually going to steal one from Kev. Every time that the, the Giants have gone to the Super Bowl or you know had success in the playoffs, they've gone through Green Bay. This is no different. I think that they're going to win this game because of their defense. I think Aaron Rodgers and this offense will struggle a little bit. They won't be able to run the ball. It will be one-dimensional offense, and I like the secondary and the pass rush of the Giants to slow them down. On the offensive side of the ball, I think it will be the difference. I think you know, that secondary of the Packers isn't strong, and it has a lot of injuries. Odell Beckham will feast. Sterling Shepard will feast. and I think Eli will make enough plays to win the game. 
So I'm going to go with the Giants in a very close game, probably like 20 to 17, something, something of that nature. I had a very difficult time trying to pick this one out. Uh, you got a Giants team that's very defensive focused. I love Jamoris Jenkins and I love Olivier Vernon. They're, they're putting a lot of pressure on certain guys to throw the football and make inaccurate passes. Um, when you come over to the Green Bay side, that defense is not very solid. Um, it's got a lot of injuries, as we were talking about, me and Mitch, in the uh, Packers-Lions-NFC North title game uh, recap Sunday, um, saying that there's a lot of injuries on that side, and it could be a big defensive uh, struggle for them, especially with Odell Beckham. However, for me, I'm going to go with the Packers. Um, I know this is a very difficult flip-a-coin situation. History dictates that the Giants – have beaten the Packers both years that they went to the Super Bowl, um, and they beat them both and Lambeau. Um, but for me, when it comes to Aaron Rodgers, I think his confidence is at an all-time high right now. Uh, you know, he's, he's running the table, quote-unquote, and I think he wants to, to do that. Um, I think he can beat the Giants. I think there's a way for him to find receivers like Devontae Adams and Jordy Nelson. Um, if, they can, if one guy is probably locked on, I would say Janoris Jenkins. Uh, then you just got to go next man up. Somebody's got to step up uh, for them and make some big plays. Like I said, you got Devontae Adams that can be there. Randall Cobb should be back this week, so that's a big one. Uh, you got somebody like Geronimo Allison, Richard Rodgers. There are certain targets for me that would – for the offense, for them to keep going along. I don't think the Giants' offense is all that great. I've always said Eli Manning is the most overrated quarterback there is, at, was, and ever will be. Um, he's got a great receiver in Odell Beckham. He's got a great receiving core. I just think he's going to be a key factor in what they do. Um, so for me, I just got to – for me, the, the struggle was really difficult. But I'm going to go with the uh, the advantage or the uh, the big-time plays that Aaron Rodgers will make. So I got to go with Green Bay here. I thought I'd never see the day where Dylan quotes Brett Hart. <laughs> hey. I'm going to say that. I'll say that. <laughs> You know, you got to use it sometimes, even people you don't like. You know? uh, well, first, for, let me let me say a couple of quick things here, first of all. I think Aaron Rodgers put himself in the MVP conversation with the run uh, at the end of the year. No team other than the Patriots seems to find no names I've never heard of before. Who the heck is this guy? What is this guy doing? Who is this Geronimo <laughs> what? Allison. Put on the field. Yeah, I and, and put on the field to succeed. Um, I think a brilliant coaching move was, I think, keeping Ty Montgomery uh, as a little secret weapon in the second half of the season. Uh, however, uh, Eli Manning will sit there. He will throw 60 passes. He will throw interceptions. But um, And he's going to make mistakes. But the, the bottom line is, is that defensive secondary for Green Bay is injured. And I just think the Giants' offense – that that receiving core is just going to do just enough to win. Uh, Eli is overrated as you think he is. When it comes to playoffs, he seems to find a way to do just enough to find just can enough. We, can we talk to about that for a sec? Like, people always say, why is Eli good in the playoffs, but he's not good in the, in the regular season? It's because Eli has one attitude the entire season. No pressure gets to him because his face is constantly like this. Yeah. So, like, it, the guy has the same demeanor no matter what the game is. I think that's why. Yeah. Still hate him. Yeah, and that defense, that Giants defense is just – it's going to be – it's so tough. It's, it really is. I think uh, I think Aaron Aaron's in for a little bit of a surprise, unfortunately, and I think the Giants win this one. Hmm. We're going to have some interesting records here after Wild Card Weekend. Any rebuttal? I, I understand that the Giants are coming in here maybe as favorites, and I like their defense quite a bit. I just don't see their offense pulling it out. I well, actually, the Packers are uh, favored by four and a half points. So you can guess who I'm taking in that. Okay, I like that. Um, I just, you know – for me, I just I think Aaron Rodgers is going to come in clutch. I think there's a lot of pressure on him because he's got one super or two Super Bowl rings, hasn't gotten one in quite a bit. They haven't gotten a big amount of success in a while. I think he's going to come up here and do something different. That's just my opinion. 
we'll see. When it comes yeah, to... You know what? You know what? I I had a tough time picking this one. I, I, you could go. You can go yes. either way. I, yeah, I, I did. Really the thing, I'm, that's I'm still debating it in my head, honestly. Yeah, it's it's the like that's the thing. It's consensus is this is really hard, and I could have picked either team. I, I think the biggest thing in the game, which is a lot in the playoffs, is it's going to be up to the front of both teams. Like if if the if the Packers can get pressure on Eli, that can be a huge difference because they're secondary. And then the other side, if the Packers can block efficiently, then I don't care how good your secondary is. A Rod will have time and he'll be able to deliver the ball. So I think it's going to be up to both defensive and offensive lines. Yeah. I think more than any game this weekend, this is the game that it will be like the biggest. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so next week is the divisional round. We have the Patriots on a bye. We have the Cowboys on a bye. The Seahawks potentially entering the next round. The Steelers of Mike potentially entering the second round. So we have a lot of big matchups. And, of course, the former member of the bottom line view, Jake's Jake. Chiefs, are on a buy as well. Um, Five so, of the eight teams could be there. Oh, so next week. It's, it's going to be pretty crazy next week, so definitely tune in to the picks next week. Um, thank you guys for stay tuned in on the bottom line view um, and watching this video and watching our picks. Make sure to check out Kev's picks and our picks if you have not already. Kev, anything to plug? Dylan, anything to plug? Uh, we're doing uh, – Mitch and I will be doing a podcast on Friday on ARD, the podcast. We're doing five podcasts a week, so check that out. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, five podcasts. I know. Crazy stuff. So uh, tomorrow we're going to do another one. Tomorrow, Friday will be my first guest will be Mitch Milani from the Bottom Line View. We're I feel NFL. special. <laughs> we're talking to NFL picks. Uh, Dilly, you could come on. We're also going to talk about who would you rather have, Bo Horvat or Sean Monahan? Ooh, some good good content there. Um, I don't, you know, this is weird. I don't have much to plug right now. Uh, there's there's going to be some good stuff coming out. Of course, our football videos, you know, always check that out. Um, we're going to have more wrestling content. We still have to film uh, a video about who's going to win the Royal Rumble, so we got to film that soon. Um. Is and he going to win the Royal Rumble? No, he thinks he's going to win the Royal Rumble. We'll, we'll answer who's going to win. We'll get excited. I'm trying to pitch it. Wait, wait. We need we need seven more people to run in unnecessarily into that segment <laughs> and say that they're going to win the Royal Rumble. <laughs> seven more people. Uh, I'm trying to pitch a new series to Mitch. We'll see how he thinks about it. Maybe that'll get out there. But uh, there's some good content, and we're super excited for football season. So stay tuned for that. 2017 banger thank you for the new subscribers for uh coming in and subscribing um for the 2017 bottom line view we'd like to thank you for that and uh, of course check out our wild card recaps this weekend not sure exactly who's going to be on what time i'll be on all of them for sure so stay i'll be the bottom on line view. Green um, Bay and new york one for sure can't do any of the saturday ones so we'll see look i, I can do saturday Okay, so Kev will be on Saturday. Mike will probably be on the Steelers game, but I have to double check. But I'll be on all of them. Kev will be on Saturday. Dylan will be on some of them. So stay tuned. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's the bottom line view. Peace out. Peace.